contains disturbing themes and content. Viewer discretion is advised. We are no strangers to the darkest moments of the world on this channel. We've covered murders, disturbing media, abductions, and missing people. I think it goes without saying I made my opinion on these topics pretty clear, that while they may be disturbing or sickening in some cases, I've always felt like there's a sense of duty to make sure they're covered for the sake of documentation and analysis. What could we do differently? What was done right? These are the questions that always run through my mind covering any subject typically on this channel. Today is no exception. Even though the subject itself makes me sickened a little bit, you probably know where I'm going with this just by the title alone. In this episode, we're going to delve into a topic that may be a little too much for some people. If you're squeamish or sickened by cases involving children, this video isn't for you. Go watch one of the other videos in the playlist linked with the card on screen. This is Helmut Kentler, and he was responsible for one of the biggest underground operations funded by the German Senate. This is the story of the lives of ruined children, crimes that were unspeakably committed, and how one man got away with what would be considered today as a government-funded boring. Helmut Kentler was born on July 2nd, 1928 in Cologne, Germany. As a young adult, Kentler had always wanted to study theology to become a pastor, but due to his father's insistence, he studied as an electrical engineer. After his father's passing, he decided to switch studies into psychology, medicine, education, and philosophy, before ultimately graduating with a doctorate in 1975. He became fascinated with social pedagogy, or the upbringing of children into society, and how they connected at individual and community level. He was a very devout Christian as well, working with the Protestant Church as a youth education officer which actually led him to becoming known for his youth work. Where Dr. Kentler shined most in his studies though was as a representative of sex education. From 1979 to 1982, he was the president of the German Society for Social Scientific Sexual Research and even became a board member for the German Humanist Union. He worked as a court expert as well in cases involving sex offenders, as well as many cases involving the mistreatment of children in general. In 1997, Kentler was quoted as saying, I'm very proud that so far all cases I've dealt with have been terminated with this continuation of proceedings, or even acquittals. It was because of all this knowledge and the connections he made that he was able to receive funding for an experiment. Now, all the information is not currently available as there's still ongoing investigations into the experiment itself, but this is the information I managed to piece together. In the late 1960s, the Berlin Senate granted approval and funding to Kentler for an experiment. Kentler would take foster children from West Berlin and give them new homes, but the homes of these 13 to 15 year old boys were those of known In one case revealed courtesy of a victim by the name of Marco, the New Yorker reported that one foster parent by the name of Fritz Hankel had been with as many as eight foster children in 16 years. A teacher even noted that Hankel was always trying to make contact with boys. And in six years later, a caseworker even reported that Hankel had a romantic relationship with one of his foster sons. These experiments continued until the early 2000s. 
Child after child was sent into what was essentially a prison with their own tormentor. The disturbing part is that Kentler never once denied that it was happening. He would often state that the parents would overreact over claims of abuse towards their child, and he considered equal relationships between adults and children to be acceptable. Looking back now, it wouldn't be a stretch to say that Kentler was actually a supporter of these beliefs, and fought to get many sex offenders off without conviction in court. During his court work, he was even noted as stating that real don't use violence. The only problem in these cases is the violence used against the children. In the case of Marco's story, it was revealed multiple times that when the victims would try to defend themselves, albeit with weaponry or just fighting off their attackers, Kentler was called to de-escalate the situation. He would consistently check on them and report back on his findings to the German Senate, specifically Berlin. But he would also stop courts from allowing kids to even see their real parents, stating that their birth parents would be a bad influence on their development. Kentler would go as far as to claim that the birth parents were abusive or criminals themselves, just to make sure his experiment wasn't stopped prematurely. Under the guise of an experiment, one scientist single-handedly created a bell ring that never stopped for over 30 years inside the country of Germany. It wasn't even discovered by the people until Kettler himself revealed it after the statute of limitations for the crimes he would have been charged with had finally passed. For this reason, Helmut Kentler never saw any charges or prison time for his crimes. In his reports, he made it well aware that he was aware the minors would be abused, but he disregarded it, believing it would help the children find social stability through their exposure. A monster walked away scot-free after ruining the lives of an unknown number of children over the course of 30 years. He would mark his experiment as a complete success in his documents in 1988. Of course, after the shocking revelation of this going on got out, many investigations began involving the Kentler experiments. The biggest one took place in 2015 after the public pressured the Berlin Senate into a study. A political scientist by the name of Theresa Nentwig was tasked with finding out the amount of affected people and helping to provide support to them. It wasn't until June 15th of 2020 that Berlin Senator for Education, Sandra Shears, promised victims financial compensation from the state of Berlin. So far, the highest amount I could find in compensation was around 50,000 euros or $60,000 American. As for Kentler, he passed away in 2008, a free yet highly controversial man. Whether or not he participated in the abuse of children has kind of been an open question, as there's been no evidence to suggest that he has participated. The only saving grace is that experiments like these may never happen again thanks to Germany. They began cracking down on child abuse and sex offenses since the release of this report. And though there are minor law changes, hopefully it leads to something bigger down the line. I know this video was a tough one to sit through. There were many times I actually felt really sick reading about what the victims endured and what was legally allowed to happen. But I hope this episode will be a call to action. If you know of a child suffering abuse, please find the resources in the description below to help. Call 911, call Child Protective Services, and don't stop calling until you get a person that can help you. It might take a few tries, but the help will be there. And to those victims of child abuse, you are strong, and you did not deserve what happened to you. And I promise that these monsters will not go unpunished. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope this video informed you as well as it did me. I'm not going to ask if you enjoyed this video because I think the tone speaks for itself. 
Remember that you're loved and I look forward to broadcasting to your screens once again. Sleep tight. And be safe. <laughs>